Hello and welcome to ACES ABS. I'm your host, Sami Khan, and today we have with us Mr. Umang Agarwal. Words full short for describing his astonishing achievements. He's a university rank holder. He's a five-star coder at CodeChef, has done various internships, and has been among the top 10 educators at an academy. He has a zest for writing, and various articles written by him have been published. He's currently working at Microsoft Hyderabad. We welcome you, sir. Thank you so much, Sami, for inviting me, and I am looking forward to share my experiences and learnings with you all. Thank you so much, sir. How are you doing? I'm really doing great, Sami. Thanks for asking. I am sure that everyone, every interview that you have been into must be asking you the same question again. How did you feel after getting this, this, this job opportunity? So, yeah, uh, that feeling actually couldn't be expressed in words and uh, it would be unfair to actually express that in words, uh, that feeling. So yeah, it, it's, it is more than amazing and more than what I can really express in words. Yeah. So it, uh, it, it's, it has, it's been a great experience and it's been a great feeling which I feel after ever cracking any interview or whatever life I'm living right now is uh, more of a dream which I have ever thought. Definitely, yeah. So, so let's just jump into the questions first. So can you, can you give us a brief roadmap of DSA and how the students should follow it? So rather than a roadmap, I would love, I would love to share my views and my suggestions on how you should go for DSA. Because a uh, roadmap to DSA, you can find hundreds of videos on YouTube related to roadmaps of DSA, but that will not work for everyone uh, will that who will watch that because the yeah. thing is the everyone has their own capability, their own mindset and their own uh, way of learning something. And I don't think uh, it would be fair to uh, just uh, kind of give a roadmap to everyone that everyone should follow that because it doesn't work like that. Right. So rather I will I love to share my experiences. Through my experiences, I will uh, share my views. Ki, uh, how should you go for DSA? And actually, why DSA is important, I would also invest some time in talking about that. So, most probably, for example, uh, when we talk about data structures and algorithms, it is simply like a fundamentals. Like it is a fundamental of computer science. Just just similar to that, uh, before learning mathematics, you go and learn about numbers, algebra, and various small formulas like A plus B whole square, all those things, which we generally used later on and which we may, may not directly use but yeah we we use it overall right yeah. we, we we might even go and solve integration differentiation problems but still we will use those basics of mathematics that we have learned in your school times first or second standard so similar to that data structures algorithms is also is fundamentals of computer science which rather you would when you join a company or when, when you will work for uh, on any project that that actually can scale right because when we talk about the real world, it is not one or two people. It is generally one crore, two crore, or maybe hundreds of crores. Yeah, true. You are building a product for crores of people at a time. So when I worked at ShareChat, I have actually seen, I have actually rather have seen dynamic programming being implemented there. I have actually seen, for example, I'll also like to give an example. Ki, mm -hmm. Now it is whenever you go on Google and search for something, right? Or whenever you search for anything on any uh, search bar, because every app has a search bar. So you generally don't type the correct spelling, right? Maybe for good, you go and type GD and you are expecting that good can come, right? In in the chats also, you don't uh, prefer to type the correct spelling. So that, so have you ever thought of how spellings are being corrected from the back end from the app, app itself, right? How instead of searching MOR and ING morning, you are still searching for MRNG and expecting the correct result. So that is being done through a very famous problem of dynamic programming that is known as edit distance. Right. Mm -hmm. So it is a kind of it calculates the minimum changes to be done in MRNG to make it morning and then it mm -hmm. suggests you results based on that. Right. So I've seen I've seen uh, at share chat being data such as algorithms directly being used. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that it is indirectly used. I'm saying directly the same algorithm of edit distance is being used to correct spellings. Right. At Microsoft, I'm working right now. I've seen I've seen like almost almost every time whenever you talk about caching type of things in uh, real real life systems there you will find something known as caching which generally caches the result for some time so that it doesn't go again and again and search in the database so that caching happens is possible only through uh, hash maps that we use generally in data structures so without hash maps you cannot do caching or something like that there is no something known as redis all those things so i'm just giving you an overview key dsa is important right that you should know that dsa why you are learning dsa you should know that you cannot build a real life system you cannot build a scalable system without learning dsa Right now, how you should learn DSA? That's the main point. Now, 
I I'll, I'll prefer like I'll not give you a roadmap. I'll not give you some st- set of steps how to learn DSA, but rather I'll give you that for learning DSA you should follow a sustained approach, not not an excited approach, right? Excited approach is something which you just go and solve uh, a set of problems and you expect yourself to be an expert at DSA. That is not something that you should go for when you are in college or when you are in first or second year. In the first or second year you have enough time to explore things, right? So you should just start. learning a programming language because that is the first step to learn dsa right so just go and learn a programming language you can start with c either c++ you can start with anything that you like right after learning a programming language first of all try to master like how to write for loops how to write while loops just the basic things when you are done with that just just solve some basic problems based on mathematics based on based on normal observation skills right once you are done with this once you are done with the basic thinking right basic observation skills then only you should go and learn what is an array what is what is a linked list what is a stack what is a queue all those things will come after that then you can for learning dsa now this thing happens differently for everyone right now if you are if you are that kind of person who wants to grind yourself who wants to search on the internet now i will search for a stack i learn that i will search for the resources on internet i can read books and understand things right i can i can just kind of i'm just i just i'm just so curious to learn that i can learn from anywhere on the internet because everything is available on the internet so this is the first type of person that i was generally during my college so i have never followed any specific course any specific road map kind of thing or not any paid course not any free course nothing i just learned everything by myself by because i had the curiosity i searched for things i learned so this is one way second way is if you're not that kind of person if you want an structured course in hand ki no i will follow this 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 i will learn dsa you should go and buy a course as a status for like you are paying 10 lakhs on your, during your college just go and buy a course for 10000 or maybe 10000 is a very small amount in front of 10 lakhs just go and buy a course if you want if you're not have that money if you're not ready to invest that money just go and follow any free course that is available in plenty on the internet just go and buy that learn from there just learn because the learning happens through videos learning happens through reading if you're not that kind of person who wants to read go and watch some videos right now the main thing is learning happens side by side along with that try to solve problems on different online jazzes right you can start with code forces you can start with lead code it it depends upon like many person don't like lead code many person don't like code forces ui so it depends upon person go and check out go and explore all the platforms and just continue with whatever you want right mm. so learn and solve learn and solve the both the things should be parallel so learning implementation learning implementation it it doesn't work like ki first of all you learn everything and then you will start solving problems both should happen parallelly do along with learning just practice keep practicing that's the way you should approach rather than just getting a set of uh, questions uh, sheet like nowadays sheets are on trend so mm-hmm. rather than those things you should follow this a sustained approach and rather than an excited approach just go slow but you will go very far that is my uh, agenda right so so very very nicely explained actually so you know uh, these is this is these are the kind of approaches that you do for getting into a company but are there any different approaches to get into mang or any different approach that you found that was uh, apart from all the things that you have done in tsa so basically the approach to get into any company depends upon like w- what are the parameters that they generally judge upon so most most the most of the companies most of the product based companies like microsoft amazon google right or apple or swiggy zomato or most of the companies are generally who are building a product by themselves they require problem solvers that is the main point now the problem solver is a very broader term it is not like who knows dsa is a good problem solver a problem solver means who can take up a problem break it solve and just give the solution that is known as a problem solver right mm. now how can someone solve a problem someone can solve a problem using some tools using some technologies right now right. what do i mean by a tool by a tool i mean that what are the things that you are going to use to solve solve a problem right for example if if you are going and searching on google and google is not giving you result at a very fast time that is a problem so you want to improve the latency how can you improve the latency you can improve the latency by like adding some or maybe improvising the algorithms that google is using right for that you need you need algorithmic power you need that data structures power then only you can use those tools to solve that problem right the next next thing is technologies right technologies means you can have react 
you can use react to build up a beautiful ui right you can use node js to build powerful systems on the back end so all those things come into place right so problem solver doesn't only mean dsa because i have seen people without dsa going into good companies and doing great work like uh, many companies are there in uh, and who pays actually well like gojek if you have heard about so these yeah. companies don't directly look for dsa uh, people they rather look for open source people they are rather focus on the technologies part so there are companies like that also but again they are also good problem solvers after all so the problem solving is the most important aspect of getting into a company you can attain the problem solving skills through any approach and one of them is dsa one of them is maybe you can use competitive programming to get good into dsa if you can directly solve lead code to get in good into dsa right you can do open source to good to be a good problem solver there are many ways right that's the mm. main okay true very well i guess so uh, sir this is a question that every third year student has in mind is that when you find when you try to find an internship you get to find two kinds of internship one are the paid internships the other are the unpaid internships so what do you think that people should people opt for the unpaid internships or should work really hard instead of getting into an unpaid internship work for the paid internships so most probably what i have seen over time is ki almost with no matter how small a company is uh, pays for an internship right if it is not paying you it means either the work is not that great or either the work is completely manual kind of thing so that depends upon the work that you are going to do for example if you are compromising your learning for an internship then you shouldn't do that so for example if you are not ready for placements if you are not ready to sit in uh, interviews of product based companies for full time roles then you shouldn't go and do an internship whether it is paid or unpaid doesn't matters right but the thing is if you are ready ki now you think ki now you have time and now this time i am just wasting this time right i am not uh, preparing myself i am not upskilling myself just go do an internship whether it is unpaid or paid doesn't matters after all you are going to learn something right so at the end that depends upon the time the, the the timeline that you are in right for example you are among you are around the end of your third year and next month your companies are going to come